Integration. It's a big topic for a lot of reasons, and I hope I can cover it as fully as I possibly can in this video. If there's something that I've left out or comes across incorrectly to any of my viewers, please reach out, leave a comment, let me know what's up. I want this video to be as informative while also being as sensitive as possible. First off, it's important to define what integration is for our viewers who might not know. Integration is the process in which an alter is merged, melded, or recovered, some people use, into the whole. So this means that an alter does not function independently of other alters anymore, and either becomes a part of another alter or a part of the whole. This is very much unlike dormancy, whereas in dormancy the alter becomes non-functional, and doesn't front and doesn't play a role in outward life, whereas in integration, the alter still plays a role in outward life and still functions as a, fun as a part in the brain, but is not individual anymore. And the barriers between alters that separates that part of consciousness have been broken down so that alter is now part of a greater thing. And that's where the term integration comes from. We're integrating an alter into a larger part. It's really hard to define in words, I think, so I'm gonna start tackling some myths that come with integration. The first myth is that integration often leads to the death of an alter. As I just mentioned, it's not exactly quite the same as an alter dying. The alter is still active and the alter is still functioning. The only difference is the alter is not an individual anymore. Another myth is that integration is easy or spontaneous. Neither of these things are true, and often it takes a lot of work to integrate. Whether this is work specifically on the integration or work as a system as a whole. Either way, you can't spontaneously integrate. It doesn't just happen. You have to have some conscious thought, either from the alter themselves or from the system as an entire system, to integrate an alter. Integration needs consistent therapy for a decent amount of time. There's not really any time limits that have been standardized for how much therapy or support that a system needs before they are ready to integrate. And this specifically is important because integration in a situation where the system is not monitored and doesn't have professional support can be dangerous. When an alter integrates, their memories are not separate anymore. And if they held trauma memories, those could flood into parts of the system where they aren't supposed to be and cause a chain of negative reactions that can be hard on the entire system. Before someone goes through with an integration, they have to make sure they're fully ready. Both the altar has to be ready, both the rest of the system has to be ready, and the system has to have professional support if that is a decision the system wants to make. Another common idea that is incorrect is that integration when used as a treatment mechanism has to be all the alters integrate or none of the alters integrate, and that's incorrect. Systems can choose however much integration they do or do not want as they move throughout life. Some systems might end up integrating one alter, no alters, half their alters, or maybe even all their alters. It's really up to each individual system. Another myth is that once an integration happens, it is set in stone and locked. This is not true. With further trauma, an integration can unravel and the two alters that integrated can split open again. It's also important to note that when an alter integrates, it's not one in alter integrating to the core. Sometimes there is a case when an alter can integrate to a core, and this is most specifically seen when the entire system is trying to integrate, which is actually quite rare. But most of the times, two alters will integrate together, or one alter will integrate into another alter, not the system as a whole. And the last, most biggest myth that I've seen numerous times is that integration is necessary. And the reality is, while some systems it might be a great useful tool that leads them down the road of recovery, for other systems that's just not the way to go. There's plenty other valid, useful, therapeutical recovery tools that systems can use. It's just the same way that if an individual is depressed, medication might not be the right pathway for them. While it is still a valid pathway that many individuals take, some in individuals might be uncomfortable with medication for multiple reasons, or medication just might not work out for them. And that's totally okay. One of my favorite things is 
the model of mental wellness and I'm gonna put a quick diagram up in the side while I talk about it and it's this idea that mental health and wellness are two individual things. It's the idea that thriving is not based on whether or not you are mentally ill. If you look at the diagram there's two halves one of which includes mental illness and the other of which does not and you can see there's still a variety of how well the individual is doing in their lives. So we can take that idea and apply it to systems. There's this concept called healthy multiplicity in which a system doesn't need to integrate to live a healthy life. We can explore other methods of therapy such as CBT, DBT, exposure therapy, we can treat our PTSD and eventually the fact that we are multiple does not impede us living a happy, healthy life. With therapy and communication and proper treatment for all of our other comorbid disorders, there is full chance that a system can live a healthy life without integrating. Another thing to, that kind of plays in with the non-integration side of things is that as multiples, the idea of integration can sometimes be really scary. If you think about it, we've lived our entire lives as a system. The idea of completely integrating down to one person is really foreign and it's really, I don't know what to, how to describe it, but oftentimes there's an apprehension to the idea of integrating down to a single person. And that's something that you often have to respect. And another reason why some systems have a lot of apprehension to integrating is because a lot of professionals will often try to force integration on the system and that's simply not okay. Each individual should have their own say in their treatment plan and what they do or do not when it comes to that plan. At the end of the day, systems should be treated with respect and be given the ability to self-advocate. Giving systems their own choice is really important. And that's, that's the basis of it. I hope I've helped bring light on this subject to you and why it's so touchy for a lot of systems out there. And I hope you can go forth and really respect each system's individual de decision on their treatment plan on whether they want to integrate or not. Because at the end of the day, that decision is super personal for each system. It's very personal and it's very important. And it should be made by the systems themselves and not decided by an external force. Thank you and have a good day.